After all this bloody rain, the river has burst its banks. Do I love you, my oh my? River deep, mountain high. Where's the path gone? Hey, <laughs> flipping the rain. Well, I was going to go for a run down by the river, but the river has burst its banks and the path is no longer there. Right, it's underwater, all the way down there, completely flooded. By the night, this river will have completely burst its banks. The river's bursting its banks everywhere. The other side is completely footpaths completely eroded completely gone works under gun under gun works under gun there's no going for a jog down there today ah. well after a run a run in the river it's time for a drink ah. and here we go Sunderland's next match is at Sinselbank Stadium at Lincoln City. Yes, Lincoln City. Sunderland take on Lincoln City all the way down at Lincoln. Oh, Lincoln City was founded in 1879, 140 years young. Only a small club. Been doing really well over the last few years under the, the Danny Coyle. Danny Cowell, Danny Cowell regime. He's done really well getting them promoted from the conference up into League One from League Two last season. But now he's left and gone to Huddersfield and Lincoln City, the Imps, known as, in their ground at Sinselbank Stadium, has a capacity of 10,120. That's how many you can get down there this weekend to fill up that stadium. But Lincoln City are going through a really, really bad spell at this moment in time. So can Jack Ross take the bull by the horns and go down there and continue continue getting Lincoln City a bad run uh, of course to get us somehow yes Lincoln City have on a bad form of results at this moment in time they got beat at the weekend against Blackpool at Blackpool 2-1 and one the week before that they got absolutely 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 thrashed of Oxford United 6 nil at home Oxford United mind on absolutely flying form at this moment in time win at the weekend the won the weekend before that and we beat them no we didn't beat them we played with them one's a peach in the league the first match of the season but Oxford United are coming on really well at this moment in time we played them in the cup in a few weeks time at Oxford United in the next round of the cup but they thrashed Lincoln City 6 nil. the drew with watch deal Away Lincoln, one's a peach, and then they were at home against Bristol Rovers that got beat one and nil. The play at Wickham got beat they got bleed. The play at Wickham got beat three one. Three one. I need a drink at this moment in time. Why am I unable to talk properly lately? <laughs> Some people say lately. Yes, the loss to Wickham. 3-1 the game before that. In the cup, they got beat 3-1 against Donk Aske. And they lost 4-2 at... No, not Everton. Lost 4-2 at home against Everton. So, you know, they're in really, really bad run of form. They've had one victory. Just one victory in the whole of the time they've been playing over the last few matches. And that was the 31st of August. They beat Fleetwood Town. I think it was 2-0. So, Lincoln City, since the, the Cowleys or the Cowles have gone... Cowley, and Cowley, yeah. Danny Cowley and his brother have gone. They, they, they've just they've flopped completely. Now, the new manager's taken over, Mike Appleton. Michael Appleton, he's taken over. So, can he get Lincoln City playing some good football? Hopefully, not this weekend. Not this weekend. Lincoln City is an absolute wonderful place. When you go to Lincoln City, you spend the weekend there. It's beautiful. Got a cathedral, got a castle. It's, it's a really nice, historic city. Has its own coat of arms. I remember years ago, back in the 90s when I went there, I went to a pub called The Queen's Head. Very nice pub, very nice food. I'm not sure if it's still open. I, I kind of I kind of get the feeling it will be The Queen's Head. Put your comments down below, Lincoln City fans, if The Queen's Head's still open and does it still have nice food. So, Lincoln City, I have loads of time for Lincoln. I wish them all the best. 
after this match at the weekend, hopefully we can beat Lincoln City 2-0. I'm not going to be greedy and go for a big score like, Link like, like Oxford did, 6-0. I'm going for a 2-0 victory. And I wish Lincoln City all the best for the rest of the season. And I hope to find, stop the rot. I hope Michael Appleton, after this weekend's game, stops the rot, gets a few victories and, and get, keeps this, this lovely historic club in League 1. I really do. So I wish Lincoln City all the best for the future and the crowd and the fans. But hopefully this weekend I'm going for a 2-0 victory to Sunderland. So score predictions. Last week I did a couple of score predictions for a couple of matches. And this is a list of people who got the score predictions right. Bear with. Tian SFC, 10 points. Jonathan Stringer, 10 points. Jonathan Mariner, 10 points. Dave the Rave. Dave the Rave. Watch his video on, on my channel. 10 points. Fizz Spiderman PFC 10 points. George Johnson 10 points. Jacob Aviard 10 points. Watts 4433 10 points. John Simpson 10 points. Panda Inc 10 points. And not least, not last but least, not least but last. What's the fears? I've lost it. <laughs> it's Spooky Wolf. Yes, it's Spooky Wolf. Watch his Sunderland vlogs. Subscribe to his channel. Good little lad. Good up and coming, young'un. And the table now looks like this for the champions table for a winning t-shirt next season. And still, Spook Duke on 40, Angelic Skin, our Angelic Skin, 30. And then we go Peter Mandy, 20. Look at all those people. And look at Dave the Rave, 25 points. And there's some more with 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. And there's a whole host of people on tens. So people, put your score predictions down below and let's see. Who has the greatest sports noggin this weekend? I'm going for Jack Ross 2-0 victory. Have we turned the corner? Can we start climbing this table and get into the top of the league? Ipswich Town are on fantastic form at this moment in time. It's going to be really difficult. Wickham on brilliant form. And we play Fleetwood Town in a few weeks' time. A week on Saturday, to be precise. Unless it's called off. With international duties, please, please, please don't call it off for international duties because I'm bringing my nephew along for his birthday present to the Sunderland match and I might take him into the SFC fan shop and buy him a little present as well while we're there. So please, Jack Ross, find some way of not getting this match called off postponed. Cancel due to international duty. We have Lee Burge who can take over for McLaughlin. The only problem is right back. Conor McLaughlin will be called up. So who do we put in the right back? Do we really want to drag Luke 09 from the, the highs of scoring a goal at the weekend and playing fantastic football against Sheffield United and MK Dons to go back and right back? Is there anybody out there who can go to right back? Alamos Turk, the Turkish delight. Can he not perform at right back? We must have a youngster who can come in at right back. I know Fleetwood is absolutely on fire at this moment in time and it's a massive game against our nemesis, Joey Barton. But hopefully, let's get over Lincoln this weekend first. Enjoy your weekend down at Lincoln City. Like I said before, it's a beautiful place to visit. It's absolutely gorgeous. Nice cathedral, nice castle. Enjoy your weekend down there. And hopefully we'll come back with three points. And like I said before, I hope Lincoln... Do stay in this league because they deserve it. They've been around for a long, long time. <coughs> Pardon me. Ah. So I'm going to diverge just a little bit away from the match at the weekend. And I want to talk about Jack Ross. Jack Ross. Is he the man for Sunderland Football Club? I'll give him 10 matches. He's had 10 matches. And what he's done in those 10 matches is he's played five. <laughs> he's played 10, man. Jesus. He's played 10 matches. Clearly, I've just said it about 15 times, dummy. He's played 10 matches. He's won five. He's drawn four. He's lost one. One ridiculously hideous match against Peterborough. He's played... 10 matches. Yes, he's played 10 matches. He's scored 16 goals. Not personally, he hasn't scored 16 goals. Sunderland have scored 16 goals and let in 12. Plus 4 goal difference on 19 points. Is that good enough for the first 10 matches of a League 1 campaign? Give us your, you know, give us your thoughts down below in the comment section. But, at this moment in time, I think Jack Ross is the best manager in the North East. 
let's look at the three North East teams. We'll start off with Sunderland. We spent nothing in the transfer market. Let's, let's remember, we've spent nothing in the transfer market. Free transfers and loan ease. That's basically it. I know we've got George Dobson, but I don't know what his transfer fee was. But we basically have spent zilch, zero, and we're fifth in the league. And we will be promoted this season, regardless if Jack Ross stays a goal. I'm confident, right? The players that have come in that we've brought in and free transfers have a total market value of 7.43 million. So Jack Ross, with nothing to play with at this moment in time, hands tied, is doing really, you know, let's face it, we take away the ship football. We take away, we can't keep a clean sheet. We take away sitting back on 1-0, 2-0 leads, and hopefully we can hang on. We take away that kind of shite. He's doing a canny job, basically. You know? So, we, I think we kind of have to give him a few more games. Now we'll move on to the old nemesis, Newcastle United, Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce is nowhere near a Premier League manager. He's not a Premier League manager. We know that. Newcastle fans know that. Mike Ashley knows that. And even Steve Bruce himself knows that. There's not, there's not one, there's not one fan out there who wants Steve Bruce at Newcastle United. And so far, they're in 19th place. They've played seven matches. They've won one, they've drawn two, they've lost four. They've scored four goals, led in 13 and only got five points. How on earth they beat Tottenham Hotspur is beyond me. It's the fluke of all flukes. Steve Bruce spent 40 million on one player. 40 million on one player. I spent 60 million in total. But his transfers he's brought in have a market value of 75 million. Are Newcastle United going to go down? I thought, no, let's, let's, let's take away the banter and the rivalry. I thought Newcastle United, hand on me hard, I thought they would be okay. I thought Steve Bruce would have the passion and, and the belief, the drive, the will, you know, being a Geordie, the, he would rally them and get the fans behind them. And he would survive. I still think today, at this moment in time, Newcastle will not go down. I don't think they will. But him as a manager is not as good as Jack Ross. You know, I know there's leagues difference, but look at what they've done with what they've spent. Look at what they've had to play with. I think Jack Ross is a better manager than Steve Bruce. You know, you may laugh at us and prove us wrong, but at this moment in time, in the table situation, I think so. Now we move to Middlesbrough, Jonathan Woodgate. They're in 19th place. They've played nine games. They've won two, drawn three, lost four, scored nine, led them 13, and on nine points. And there's no way in a million years, Jonathan Woodgate is going to get Middlesbrough back into the Premier League at the first time of asking. They have spent 2.5 million but their, their market value of the players they've brought in is worth eight million. So they got absolutely smashed off Chef Wed at the weekend, one and four, and they're going through a really bad patch. They are really terrible. I said, listen, John the Woodgate on the on the on the TV the other day, and the reason for losing and what they have to do, and it doesn't sound very convincing. You listen to Steve Bruce, who goes. Two Leicester City and players four four two. Who plays at home to Watford and has one up front? I thought Jack Ross's tactics were shit. Steve Bruce, you the Iceman, you the cherry on top of the cake. I believe Jack Ross is the best manager out of the three North East teams. That's just my prediction. That's just my that's just my thoughts. Simple as. He is the best manager in the North East at this moment in time. I'm not saying over throughout the centuries, throughout the years, throughout the seasons. I'm seeing at this moment in time in the three leagues how they've done at the start of the season. Jack Ross is performing the best. And he's not performing fantastic. He's not performing great. So it says nothing. Of, it, it doesn't say much about the North East managers. They are all garbage at this moment in time. But me as a Sunderland fan, I may not like the football being played at Sunderland. But... I can't say that we're not actually doing too badly because we've only lost one match. So things aren't that bad. And I, I'm hoping, deep down inside, I really am, I'm willing on Jack Ross 
to start finding the goods to go on a long unbeaten run and take us back to the championship as champions. I really, I really want Jack, sincerely, I want Jack Ross to succeed. I really do. I don't want to be chopping changing managers. He's a, he's a lovely man. Jack Ross is a lovely bloke. His demeanor is nice. He comes across fantastic. He talks a good talk. I really, really want him to succeed. But if he doesn't succeed, he has to go. Simple as. There we go. So this weekend against Lincoln City at Sinsil Bank Stadium. I'm going for a 2-0 win to Sunderland. What are your score predictions? If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a like and all that other malarkey. And whoo. Saving ESO 10 points to boot. Catch you later.